Good morning. Good morning. And uh, let me start by saying that I love hearing a child's voice accompany the prayers. Uh, so thank you, JJ, for your contribution this morning. Brian, would you move to the next slide? Today's theme is recognize the Holy One in each other. When we look at Jesus of Nazareth or individuals like Gandhi and Mother Teresa, we can see the Holy One revealed through lives and examples. These are people who change the world through their teaching, nonviolence, and service. Through their lives, we see the path that leads to a different kind of life, one ignited by a divine spark, a life consumed with unconditional love and service for others. We see clearly what it means to be holy and live up to our spiritual potential. Yet it's a daily challenge to follow God's commandments. The adult class has recently studied the parables of Jesus and now the Sermon on the Mount. The message of Jesus forms a pathway to building a kingdom of heaven on earth. The rules are don't lie, steal, or kill. Don't even think about sharing falsehoods or coveting another's property or even ponder hatred towards others. Instead, take the words of Jesus to heart and live by them. The message is simple, yet sometimes too simple. We ask with, uh, we answer with, but what about this situation? Or what if they do that? While we want simple answers, we often ignore Jesus' simple message to love one another, love God, and seek the divine nature in everyone. Instead, we end up layering new rules and amendments and clarifications onto the law until it becomes so complex that we become like the convert who challenged a rabbi to, quote, teach me the entire Torah while I'm standing on one foot, end quote. Rabbi Hillel responded, quote, that which is hateful to you do not do to another. That is the entire Torah, and the rest is its interpretation. As Amy Jill Levine points out in her book, The Sermon on the Mount, which we're studying in class, quote, we have to see the image of the divine in those it would be easy to hate. The Nazis who are among us today, the terrorists who would seek to, to die a martyr's death by blowing up at themselves and everyone around them, end quote. To add to her list, I'd add the folks it would be easy to dislike the neighbor who just doesn't see things the way we do politically, the family member who always contradicts us, the child who always knows a better way. Though it may test our resolve in our Christianity, we need to see them as created by the same God, containing the same spark of divinity, fighting the same battles. They too are human beings. They too are brothers and sisters who share this earth, and as Christians, we understand that brothers and sisters refers to all humankind, not just close relations. When, what Christ calls us to do is not easy, but it's an essential measure of his followers. To paragraph the first letter of John, the second chapter, third through the 10th verse, which, by the way, was a letter written to Gentile believers in the early church, it states, now by this we may be sure that we know Jesus. If we obey his commandments, whoever obeys his word truly in this person, the love of God has reached perfection. Whoever says, I abide in him, ought to walk just as he walked. The author of John continues, I am writing you a new commandment that is true in Christ and in you because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. Whoever says, I am in the light, while hating a brother or sister, is still in the darkness. Whoever loves a brother or sister lives in the light, and in such a person there is no cause for stumbling. End quote. We call ourselves a peace church, but we need to earn that title by seeking peace within our families, within our congregation, with our colleagues, and all we encounter. Would you move to the next slide? It reminds me of, a story, of the story of Abigail, the wife of Nabal, from the first Samuel, the book of first Samuel. King Saul had been hunting David because he feared with, 
his popularity, he could remove Saul from the throne. The throne. After an unexpected meeting in a cave where Saul is vulnerable and David still pledges allegiance to him, Saul returns home and David with his men go into the desert at Paran. Nearby lived a very wealthy man, Nabal, who owned a thousand goats and 3,000 sheep. His servants were shearing his sheep near Carmel. The man's wife was Abigail. The Bible describes her as an intelligent and beautiful woman, but her husband was surly, mean, and miserly in his dealings. While David was in the wilderness with his men, they camped near Nabal's servants who were shearing his flock. David's soldiers did not mistreat the shepherds, and nothing of Nabal's was stolen. When the harvest time came, the harvest festival time came, David sent 10 young men asking, asking Nabal's servants to share whatever they could find with David's men. Nabal's rude reply was, who is this David? Who is the son of Jesse? Many servants are breaking away from their masters these, day, these days. Why should I give my bread and water and the meat I have slaughtered and give it to men coming from who knows where? That may sound somewhat familiar in our day and age. Now remember that David was famous for his battle against Goliath. So in response to the insult, David said to his men, each of you strap on your sword. And about 400 men went up with David while 200 stayed behind. One of the servants told Abigail about David's messengers and the insults thrown at them. The servants continued, quote, these men were very good to us. They did not mistreat us. And the whole time we were out in the fields near them, nothing was missing. Night and day, they were like a wall of protection around us, end quote. Recognizing that disaster was hanging over her husband and the whole household, Abigail acted quickly. She took 200 loaves of bread, two skins of wine, five dressed sheep, five measures of roasted grain, 100 cakes of raisins, and 200 cakes of pressed figs, and loaded them all on donkeys. Abigail sent her servants ahead and followed, but did not tell her husband. As she came riding her donkey into a mountain ravine, she confronted David and his men. David was incredibly angry and muttered to himself, it's been useless. I've watched over this fellow's property in the wilderness so that nothing of his was missing. He has paid me back evil for good. May God deal severely with me if I allow one male in Nabal's household to live to see the dawn. When, Ab when Abigail saw David, she quickly got off her donkey and bowed down before him with her face to the ground. She begged for forgiveness and asked that David disregard the words of her wicked husband because just like his name, he's a fool and folly follows him. Then Abigail pleaded with David to accept her gift. May this gift replace your justly deserved vengeance. The Lord will certainly make you the head of a lasting dynasty, and you will be appointed ruler over Israel. When that day comes, may you not have on your conscience the staggering burden of needless bloodshed. Please forgive and remember your servant. David then said to Abigail, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, who has sent you today to meet me. May you be blessed for your good judgment and for preventing bloodshed this day, for I was determined to avenge myself with my own hands. Had you not come quickly to meet me, not one male belonging to Nabal would have been left alive by daybreak. Then David accepted her gift of supplies and said, go home in peace. I have heard your words and granted your request. Nabal's greed and rudeness could have caused the destruction of all his household had it not been for the peacemaking of Abigail. She stood between death and peace, and yet I bet few of you knew her name or her story. She is one of a million trillion stories of unsung heroes who calmed the waters, who sought peace rather than violence, who diffused bad behavior with good. Next slide, Brian. To jump back to the 21st century, I love the image and, and intent 
of a recent statement by Pope, uh, by Pope Francis. He shared that we are branches of the same vine. We are communicating vessels. The good and the bad each one does is poured out on the others. To the extent that we remain in God, we draw closer to others. And to the extent that we draw closer to others, we remain in God." End quote. The image of vessels overflowing with our good or bad deeds strikes a chord. Each day, each hour, each minute, we make the choice. Often we hear about great heroes who have, have changed the world and wish there were more of them in our day and age, or wish we could be like them. Heroes like Jesus, the Apostle Paul, Gandhi, Mother Teresa, Martin Luther King, people who shake the world and change it. Yet little known Abigail saved countless lives with her quick action and generosity. Next slide, please. The words of our 44th president re reflect the wisdom of Abigail. Quote, change will not come if we wait for some other person or some other time. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the change that we seek, end quote. Next slide. That sentiment was echoed by a young woman, Amanda Gorman, at the recent inauguration as she read her poem, The Hill We Climb. The final lines read, we will rebuild, reconcile and recover and every known nick of our nation and every corner called our country our people diverse and beautiful will emerge battered and beautiful. When day comes, we step out of the shade of flame and afraid. The new dawn balloons as we free it, for there is always light if only we're brave enough to see it, if only we're brave enough to be it. Next slide. We as followers of Christ are called to be the light of the world. Our 41st president referred to America as, quote, a nation of communities, a brilliant diversity spread like stars, like a thousand points of light in a broad and peaceful, peaceful sky, end quote. During his presidential term, he honored Americans who served others. Next slide. Some of the recipi recipients are shown on your screen. They are the recipients of the Points of Light Award. Do you know any of them? Probably not, because they were and are ordinary citizens, not celebrities or sports figures or well-known internet influencers, even less known than the biblical Abigail. <clears throat> Their faces are a testimony to the fact that each of us can make a difference if we simply treat others as creations of the same creator. You probably heard the phrase random acts of ki kindness. Do you know that random acts of kindness week is just 14 days away, beginning on February 14? That week is a recognition that each of us in small ways can help heal our nation, can fight loneliness and grief and prove that quote, what goes around comes around end quote. Let's send around good deeds and random acts of kindness. Further remember, we are branches of the same vine we are communicating vessels, whether for good or evil. It starts with simple gestures, just making eye contact or smiling at someone. And those gestures repeated across the globe change moods. They literally brighten our days and serve to heal wounded souls. But that's the minimum effort we should be expending. Even as our mission prayer reads, quote, God, where will your spirit lead today? Help me be fully awake and ready to respond. Grant me courage to risk something new and become a blessing of your love and peace, end quote. We are challenged individually and collectively to be the light of the world. Next slide. Just like the group of around 250 people who spontaneously gathered together to form a human chain and transport books for a 40-year-old not-for-profit community books, bookshop from its old location to a new home, where its first floor would be dedicated to providing long-term living space for homeless people in the area. Next slide. 
also like the gentleman who had lost his wife to cancer five years earlier and noticed at another table in the restaurant, a woman and her family. The woman had lost her hair while undergoing chemo and fighting breast cancer. The gentleman stunned the family by paying for their, their meal and leaving an anonymous note that he had lost his wife to cancer and wanted to give the family an early Christmas present. Next slide. And like a 20 year old bartender who would dress up as Spider-Man and take to the streets to feed the homeless at night, the anonymous Birmingham Spider-Man bought sandwiches with his own money and handed them out to people in need a few nights each week. The young man shared that quote, I've learned that everyone is the same. We're all part of the human experience. And I believe we, are, we need to look at, it, at everyone as humans and help each other the same as we would a close friend, end quote. So that's our challenge, to love our, our enemies, to love our neighbors, to be the light of the world, quote, for there is always light if only we're brave enough to see it, if only we're brave enough to be it, end quote. Amen.